Okay, these RTC 1000 road short scopes, how do I get them normally set up? How I like them or just default? Um, so these ones have, the, they have some advantages and disadvantages. Um, one big caveat with them. So if you're using these scopes, check the Pro. They are the only ones that are selectable one times or 10 times. So people can leave them in either position. Um, if you're not familiar with this, the reason we have 10 times, it attenuates the signal by 10 times, but it means that uh, you loading effect on the circuit is 10 times less. So that's really good. Um, if you're doing anything at higher frequencies, the loading effect becomes very substantial. Uh, as a really simple example, um, I'm gonna, before I show you the setup, I'm just gonna put this higher frequency spy clock on um, and I'm gonna really quickly adjust a couple settings so that it shows up. Let's see if we can get this to show up here. Oops, I went too far. Okay, so there's my um, measurement with the times one probe. You can see it looks a bit rounded off. This is because it's actually loaded the circuit down. If I just switch my probe to 10 times and do nothing else, you'll see that A, the signal is going to, oops, and it's not gonna trigger right now, sorry. Um, the signal is gonna drop in Head size North substantially. And it's also going to um, have a lot more ringing. So I'm gonna increase my scale here. And you can see this ringing just because I've reduced the load on the circuit. Um, so in this case, I could leave it in one times or 10 times. Both are gonna work for my example. Um, but whatever you do, the very, very first thing you should do, plug the scope in, hit channel one. Um, this brings up what I think is kind of a hidden menu here. You then have to go down here and hit menu. Um, and you might be on one of two pages. So on the first page, check your coupling. It should be DC. On the second page, you have to hit the probe sub menu and make sure it's set to one times or make sure it matches whatever you're using. If I was using a 10 times probe, I have to set that to 10 times. Otherwise, everything's off. Okay, if that's on, working correctly, now I can exit the menu and I can adjust the um, voltage per div. So I'm gonna set this to one volt per div and I'm gonna change my measurement to be this pulse that I have. Um, I should adjust my horizontal scale over here to be like here, you know, 100 microseconds per div, whatever, if, if I have something that I roughly know is useful, um, I could adjust that. The next thing I'm gonna do is the trigger. And in the trigger, a couple things here. There's two modes, auto or normal. In normal, it always waits for the trigger. That can be annoying, it comes up red like this. When you're setting it up, you might want this off. And we'll use that once we wanna start triggering on specific things. Um, check your source matches if this is set to the wrong channel. You know, I don't have channel two plugged in. It's gonna mess up. So set it to channel one, set the type, it's edge trigger, and I have a rising edge trigger. Um, finally, adjust the level, right? I'm gonna adjust it in this case to about halfway between my bottom, max and bottom. If I didn't know what the signal was, you know, I might set it to like a volt because I'm like, ah, it's a digital signal. That's gonna a reasonable level. Um, in this case, I know it's a 3.3 volt signal, so I could set it to halfway. Um, so now we have a good looking waveform up. Okay, so the next thing I might do um, is adjust, oops, I didn't mean to hit that, I meant to hit the cursor. So it has a cursor. Um, we can turn on a automatic measurement for the cursor. So um, in this case, I, I have frequency and period coming up. To adjust the cursors, um, what I'm gonna do is Let's get out of here. So basically you exit this menu. So if you have that menu up, because I press the cursor measure, it comes up, you can exit that menu. Um, I can select what cursor by pressing the button. So as I press this button in, what you can see is it's cycling through the cursor. So I could select the X cursor here, the second X cursor, and then now I have a, um, oops. cursor, let's see what I want. Is it to show the, um, oh, come on. This is the part that this um, guy, this scope I don't like as much, but so here it's showing me a delta T 
between my cursor measurements. Um, and you know, if I adjust this, you can see that delta T is changing. Uh, what you might want instead is just to automatically measure. So I'll turn off the cursors, hit the auto measure button. Um, like a lot of scopes, pretty easy to use. Um, I would say measurement place. Um, so this is a what measurement number, not the channel number. I'm gonna turn the measurement on and I'm gonna adjust the type. So here I already have it set, but for positive pulse width, and here's where I'd set the source. Um, and you can see down here, it's coming up as plus 100 microseconds. If you've got a bunch of measurements here, you can hit clear all and it just removes them, right? So all that you do is you uh, select the measurement you want and you can turn it on or off. So you can see here, there's some other mean value. Um, I could say, hey, what's measurement three? Let's turn that one on and let's make that, um, I don't know, positive peak. So you can get a bunch of measurements and statistics up on the bottom there. Um, so that's it. So that's how you do some quick setup with this scope and get used to using it.